So this is going to be a continuation of my series on the uh, divine names of Dionysius the Areopagite. Now it's going to be a pretty short one this time since chapter 3 is remarkably short and uh, of course we're taking this whole thing chapter by chapter. Um, it's so short in fact that the bulk of this video is going to focus on just uh, the first couple paragraphs because it gives an opportunity to discuss um, one of the most important Dionysian themes which is the primacy of the good and how that relates to uh, the Areopagite's Trinitarian theology which is of course indispensable to this entire theology and it also will give an opportunity to um, contrast his view uh, against St. Thomas's uh, and see to what extent they might be reconcilable or irreconcilable. Um, well, on that point, it is important to recognize that for Dionysius, as distinct from St. Thomas, uh, borrowing from the Neoplatonic tradition, um, the good or goodness is beyond even being itself. Um, and this is for a very specific uh, metaphysical reason which we're going to explore. Uh, for Dionysius and the Neoplatonists that inspire him, um, the good is a name which signifies the divine most properly, even more so than being. In fact, for Dionysius and the Neoplatonic tradition more generally, the divine, or the one, is beyond being so much so uh, that one can even refer to the divine as non-being, inasmuch as in his super-essential transcendence he so utterly transcends all that is, so he cannot be identified with any uh, participated reality. Uh, Dionysius believes that the good is beyond being principally because its ontological scope extends not only to all those things that are, but even to those which are not, or are yet to be. Uh, for Dionysius, in order uh, for the good, uh, for, for God, to uh, truly uh, be the super-essential cause of all, uh, he must ground not only all the things that are, uh, or are currently partaking of being, but even those things which are not or are yet to be. And this is because according to Dionysius, that which does not yet exist in order to come into being must in some way uh, be inclined toward receiving the perfection of being, having the character of a desire. As we, he will uh, eventually say in chapter 4, quote, uh, if it is lawful to say so, even non-being itself aspires to the good beyond all beings and strives uh, through the denial of all things somehow to exist within the good which is really beyond being." Unquote. Thus, while given what was just said, he would have, of course, no doubt concede and does concede that being is the first fruit and the first preeminent gift proceeding from the superabundance of uh, divine perfection, uh, precisely as a gift, the divine transcends even the distinction between being and non-being, because he has dominion over both precisely as the good, which is in some sense desired by both. Beings which exist desire the good by their continued reception of their perfective actuality, and that which does not yet exist in some sense desires or is inclined toward the good. Now this transcendent goodness in its uh, superabundant perfection proceeds outward uh, from its inner Trinitarian life to meet the, fin the, the finite plane of uh, admixtures of being and non-being, or to put it in Aristotelian terms, which will become a key in a second, uh, composites of act and potency. Now this Trinitarian outpouring is present to every uh, nook and cranny of created being, and is continuously outpouring its, uh, or I should say his, uh, perfective goodness upon finite existence at every divisible moment of its uh, persistence in being. Its presence closer to finite being than finite being is to itself. Uh, Dionysius, however, is very careful to caution us uh, here not to uh, misinterpret or, or misperceive in our imagination the dynamic that is happening here. As he says, quote, Imagine a great shining chain hanging downward from the heights of heaven to the world below. We grab hold of it with one hand and then another, and we seem to be pulling it down toward us. Actually, it is already there on the heights and down below, and instead of pulling it to us, we are, bringing, uh, we are being lifted upward to that brilliance above, to the dazzling light 
of those beams, unquote. So in other words, everything that is, is uh, only because of God's outward and continuous outpouring of the gift of being to creatures. And there is no sense in which the creature's limited mode of being affects or bears a determinate relation to the divine activity whereby these creatures partake of the act of being. Every divisible moment of a thing's continuation in existence stems from the divine's uh, creative, active presence in a thing, calling the thing at every one of those moments toward the realization of its perfected fulfillment in him. Now it is worth noting that on this question of uh, goodness and being, um, there is a divergence here, as, as I've said, between St. Thomas's position and that of Dionysius. As many of you know, St. Thomas does not hold that in God goodness is prior to being, and nor does he believe that the divine altogether transcends a being, but rather holds that God is uh, esse tanto, that is nothing but being, the fullness of being and its unconditioned uh, subsistent actuality. Whereas for Dionysius, God's superessentiality wholly transcends the uh, predicamental attribution of being to God, St. Thomas holds that being is a more proper name of God than even goodness. Now, is this reconcilable? Well, while I wouldn't say that these two positions are in uh, perfect harmony, I do think that St. Thomas adds something to the conversation here, which uh, takes into account an important Dionysian truth, and through synthesis integrates it uh, within, in my opinion, a better framework. For St. Thomas, it is important to reflect on how his Aristotelian commitment to the uh, act potency distinction relates to his conception of the good. Now, to illustrate this, let me quote from the Summa itself. Quote, Goodness and being are really the same, and differ only in idea, which is clear from the following argument. The essence of goodness consists in this, that it is in some way desirable. Hence, the philosopher says, goodness is what all desire. Now it is clear that a thing is desirable only insofar as it is perfect, for all desire their own perfection, but everything is perfect so far as it is actual. Therefore it is clear that a thing is perfect only so far as it exists, for it is existence that makes all things actual, as is clear from the foregoing. Hence it is clear that goodness and being are the same reality, but goodness presents the aspect of desirableness, which being does not present. And he further says, quote, um, the first thing conceived by the intellect is being, because everything is knowable only inasmuch as it is an actuality. Hence, being is the proper object of the intellect, and is primarily intelligible, as sound is that which is primarily audible. Therefore, in idea, in idea being is prior to goodness." Unquote. So, what St. Thomas is saying here is, again, necessarily tied to his simultaneous commitment to Aristotelian and Dionysian principles. Now, on the Aristotelian view, the good as desirable is desirable precisely because of its perfection, which is inextricably linked to actuality. Hence, a thing is said to be good precisely insofar as it is an act. And it is not so much that uh, non-being uh, tends toward... Um, the good, but rather it is potency which tends toward the good, and potency is always grounded in actuality. Thus, even though a thing's baseline substantial actuality may be incomplete and in potency tends toward the good as its perfected fulfillment, this perfection is only such insofar as it is an act. And when such a reality partakes of the good, it is really receiving the fullness of its actuality. And so, even though there is a sense in which um, the good can be said to precede being, this, much, th this must be situated within a proper metaphysical framework. Goodness can only be inclined toward precisely because of its perfective uh, actuality, which brings that which exists into the fullness of its being. Hence, because of St. Thomas's adherence to the Aristotelian distinction between act and potency, he can modify the insight of Dionysius, who recognizes that there is some vague sense in which uh, non-being is under the dominion of the good. But instead of identifying this with non-being, St. Thomas will recognize uh, this for what it is, it, it, its potency. 
um, which is not altogether unrelated to not being, but at the same time cannot be wholly estranged from being because it still bears a relation to actuality in the order of uh, perfectibility or inclination. And thus, while there is truth to the Dionysian principle that the good is uh, prior and uh, perfective of substantial being, St. Thomas rightly situates, uh, situates the good in the proper metaphysical framework which uh, keeps intact, I would say, the rationally unavoidable fact that a thing can only be perfective of another inasmuch as it is an actuality. And so, as an end, the good brings that which exists into the full realization of its perfective actuality, which is grounded, of course, in the thing's very active existence. Existence does not just refer to something being instantiated here. It includes both efficient and final causality, calling a thing into reality, but also calling it to fully realize its perfective end. Thus, goodness does not so much precede being, but is its very fullness, considered precisely as final cause. And this is why saying goodness is beyond being, while differing from St. Thomas, who refers to God as nothing but being, or esse tantum, does not exactly contradict him with uh, an irreconcilable rupture, I would say. Um, so as I said, this was sort of meant to be a short video, and other chapters will explore these concepts in more depth. depth. Um, so I want to save some of uh, that detail and depth for those videos. Um, just a reminder, as I said in the last couple of videos, I do have a Patreon up now. Um, $5 a month for monthly book recommendations, Q&A priority, voting privileges on future videos, and of course the audio files to all my videos. $10 a month uh, for all of that, plus guaranteed video on a topic of your choice, so long as, of course, as it pertains to uh, philosophy or theology. So if you're interested, you can sign up for that. Um, like and share the video. Uh, subscribe if, if, if you enjoyed it. Um, if anything was unclear to you, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll try to respond. Um, God bless.